The, the next type of condition in buyu is the is the impermissible ones, that which is not permissible in buyu, such as for example stipulating a second contract based upon the first one, such as for example stipulating second contract, meaning in Arabic bayani fi bay, two bears in one bear, two contracts in one contract. Uh, what is an example of that? An example of that is uh, Brother Salim, I will sell you, huh? Uh, I'll, uh, you know, okay. Let me give the example of you know the marriage context. So, Brother Salim, I will marry you, my do- uh, my daughter, with the condition that you marry your daughter to me. Or I will marry my uh, uh, my sister to you with the condition that you ma- you marry your sister to me. So that is like one transaction with another transaction. Okay. In the same way, if you can go over to cars <laughs> and in different commodity. <laughs> And say, for example, I will sell you my car with the condition that you sell your car to me. Right? Or I will sell you my car with the condition that you sell your car to my brother. So this this is one condition based upon another condi- one contract based upon another contract which is not permitted in Islam. Every contract has to be separate. This is why in the banks, you know, uh, when you when you go to buy a house, what do they say? They have bayani fi bayi. How? They have two sales and one sale. How? You show them a house, right? You show them a house that you want to buy. And what they do is they buy the house from, from that guy, from the third party, and then they sell it to you straight away. Isn't it? So they do this in one go, in one process. That's actually bayani fi bayi. We will come to that inshallah in the fourth session when we really break it down of how the banks really do their mortgages. The next type of condition that really goes against uh, uh, um, uh, that, that is not permissible is stipulating condition that goes against the purpose of the transaction. So stipulating condition that goes against the purpose, the whole purpose of transaction is that you are the owner and you get to do what you want with it. However, if someone gives you the condition saying, I will sell it to you with the condition that you can't sell it. I will sell it to you with the condition that you can't use it. Huh? I'll sell you this house with the condition that you can't live in it. So these are all haram haram trans, haram um, uh, conditions, and therefore it is not right. Um, what we want to talk about, inshallah, now is the different types of contracts. Now, before we enter into talking, uh, uh, thinking about uh, talking about the, the the modern transactions, we have to look at what classical fiqh has talked about regarding uh, contracts. It's important to understand that business. Uh, that the transaction between a human being and another human being in, in, in normal classical fit has been divided up into different chapters. So we have buyu, for example, we have buying and selling, and then buying and selling has been itself divided up into different chapters. So for example, we have the chapter of buying and selling, which is called buyu. Then we have the, the chapter of renting, which is called ijara. Then we have the chapter of wikala, uh, for example, agency. Then we have the chapter of uh, of uh, uh, you know al thimar, for example, the chapter of buying and selling uh, 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 you know land and uh, and produce. Then we have the uh, the chapter of, for example, sibak, for example, the chapter of competitions. You know, on basically regarding sporting competitions and all that. We have the chapter of, uh, for example, hawala transactions or transfer transferring of a, of a debt, etc., etc. So we have all these different chapters within. Buyu, for example, you can say Mu'amalat, section of, of Mu'amalat in, uh, in business. And based on this, uh, we, we have, therefore, Islam has different conditions and different shurut, etc., etc., different mu'ana, different prohibitions in each uh, uh, type of, in, in, in each chapter. And each chapter is like a contract. So therefore, uh, in, a, in a particular transaction, you can have, it's a transaction of buying and selling. Or it might be a transaction of renting, or it might be a transaction of transfer of debt, or it might be a transfer of X, Y, Z, etc. So, <coughs> whenever you look at a transaction, you need to be able to associate and and uh, associate it with the uh, classical uh, chapters of fiqh that we know of, in order for you to know what the hukum, what the conditions that apply in, in such a condition in a certain a certain transaction are, and what its uh, prohibitions are. The, the, the types of contracts in Islam can be divided up into into different types depending on the way we, that we uh, look at it and the way that we consider it. So, the, so I have, I have listed here about 
uh, six different ways in which we can look at different contracts. Six different ways. <coughs> the first way is by way of hukum of the sharia. By way of hukum of the sharia, how are the different contracts uh, uh, of buying and selling? Uh, by way of hukum of the sharia, so uh, based on, for example, whether the contract is wajib or it's recommended mustahab or mubah, permissible, or dislike makruh, and if it's haram, forbidden, we can divide up the contracts in this sort of way. So for example, an example of a wajib contract would be uh, marriage, for example, if someone fears falling into the haram, something that would be wajib, for example, is uh, is uh, selling the produce that 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 you have with you. If the people are in extreme need of it, it is wajib for you to sell. You can't just hold it back. Uh, example of a recommended one would be, for example, lending and charity. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you know, wants you to lend, lend and and give people uh, money, you know, qard. Uh, so lending is good. Uh, in fact, even some of the ulama, such as Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah is of the opinion that it is wajib on you to lend if you are not in need of it and if the other person is in need of it. For example, uh, it is wajib on you to lend uh, uh, on, a, on a millionaire, for example, who doesn't have a requirement for all his money, to lend some money if someone comes to him and say, hey, so and so, I need I need to borrow a thousand pounds. So it's wajib on that millionaire who doesn't need all that money to lend the thousand pounds. So it's very important to understand that Islam has actually uh, Islam really wants us to do these sort of contracts. So what is recommended is for example lending and what is also recommended for example charity. So to give money in charity is also a recommended contract or a recommended act. Um, the next example for example something that is permissible such as buying and selling and renting. You know, these are permissible contracts. They are not recommended. Allah doesn't want you to buy and sell, recommend you to. Neither does He uh, makes it wajib but rather it is Permissible. And Allah has made it halal for buying and selling and made riba haram. So therefore we understand that buying and selling is halal. An example of a disliked contract, a hukum in a uh, disliked contract is for example selling grapes to the one who will make wine from it. And if you know that, that, that if you have a doubt that perhaps this person will use it for, uh, uh, you know, make, make wine out of it, then, then this is disliked for you to sell it. However, if you know for sure that he will use it for wine, then it becomes haram for you, for you to do so, right? But if you have a slight doubt, and that is usually usually the case, because uh, you know normally people don't ask. Hmm? Normally people don't ask, uh, what are you going to use it for? Hey, I'm selling a computer. What are you going to use it for? But if you have a slight doubt, this guy looks, you know, whatever, you know, I don't, you know, uh, he's from so, he's from so, such and such a place, and most probably he will use it for haram. Then it's makruh for you to sell it to him. If you know definitely he will use it for haram, like he says, I'm going to use this wine in order to make uh, this grape in order to make wine from it, then at that point you say, okay, it's haram for you to sell it to him. Right? Uh, and something, an example of a forbidden type of contract, and I put in there five different things because I want to talk about them. Example of a forbidden contract is, for example, lending with riba. So giving uh, money, uh, you know, to, to someone to, le- to lend. Uh, along with the condition of that, that you want extra money back, and that is uh, haram and it's forbidden. Second is, for example, selling dead meat or pork or alcohol or statues or musical instruments. You know, selling these sort of things which, which the Sharia has forbidden, which the Sharia has forbidden, uh, is is not permissible. So you can't sell dogs because Rasulullah Islam has prohibited the selling of dogs, for example. Uh, Rasulullah Islam also, and because dogs are najis, for example. And as we mentioned already, najis is a thing that is najis is not to be sold. Also, for example, you know, dirty magazines. Also, for example, uh, uh, musical instruments. These are all things that must not be sold. What if we have a? What if we are selling mobile phones that have musical instruments in it? What if you're selling mobile phones? It's a valid question, isn't it? A musical uh, mobile phones that have, uh, you know, probably 20 out of the 30 rings in it are, are music. What's the hukum? Uh, those people who, who attended the lesson yesterday would know the hukum. 